Hi, today we have attorney Bobby Chung to address a very common E2 visa question, which is how much should you invest in order to qualify for the E2 visa or what is the minimum investment amount for the E2 visa? And if you're looking around online, you may be seeing different ranges of investment recommendations. Um, 100,000 is a common recommendation for the E2 visa. Our office also uh, informs that 100,000 could be possible for many types of businesses. 150,000 would make for a stronger E2 visa case for most scenarios for many businesses. Um, but in reality, the E2 visa, it does not specify a specific minimum investment amount uh, in order to qualify because there's so many different businesses with its own purchase a price or a startup cost that there's no way for U.S. immigration to tell you how much exactly to invest or what the minimum requirement is for that specific business. And that's why we have Attorney Chung here today to really dig deep into how immigration officers are looking at a total investment and whether it's substantial enough to qualify you for the E-2 visa. Let's go ahead and have Bobby take it away for us. Bobby, how much should someone invest? This is a very common question, very popular question, because the E-2 visa law is extremely ambiguous on the required investment amount. Uh, the law simply states that the applicant has to make a substantial investment. And the reason is that the U.S. government wants to make sure the investment amount is appropriate for the type of business. And there's no particular dollar amount that is appropriate for every kind of business under the sun. So U.S. immigration wants the applicant to show how much he or she has invested and then decide whether that is a reasonable, sufficient amount for that particular type of business. What makes this question especially important is because the fact that the E-2 visa requires the applicant to invest his or her money first, create the business before they can apply for the E-2 visa. As a result, there is a great uncertainty as to taking that kind of financial risk and not having the certainty of knowing that's going to be sufficient to satisfy the immigration authorities. However, there's a way to do this such that it minimizes that risk. Thank you so much for that explanation, Bobby. Now we understand that the E-2 visa does not have a specific investment amount because there's so many different businesses to purchase or start up with their own investment amount. Uh, let's see if we could hone in, help clarify what an appropriate investment amount would be for, let's say, example, a small startup business. Would 100000 be enough for a small startup business? In a situation where the applicant is starting a brand new business, and the new business is a small startup that requires very little capital, like a service business, where the total investment amount might be below 100000 or far below 100000 The issue with a small investment amount and a startup business is that U.S. immigration has to take that leap of faith in believing this business will grow and scale to sufficient size to, uh, in order to justify the need to create jobs and generate substantial income. However, they are less generally less likely to be willing to take that leap of faith and trust in the financial growth capability and a job creation care capability of an early stage start, small startup if the investment, cap, investment capital is very low. So in general, we recommend a uh, solid figure of at least $100,000 capital investment into the business, even if it's a very low cost service-based startup business. Now, investing $100,000 at a uh, recommended minimum doesn't mean you spend the entire $100,000. U.S. immigration also look at how you spent that money and whether that expenditure demonstrate a credible establishment and startup of a new business. In fact, Typically, immigration officers do not want a startup business to spend the entire investment amount. They want to make sure that there is a reasonable amount of working capital reserve in the business bank account so that there's enough cash flow to keep the business going until the startup business develops uh, to the point where it can make enough revenue to cover its operating expenses without 
uh, working capital reserve. So there has to be an appropriate amount of working capital. How much working capital is appropriate? It really depends on the nature of the business. How long does it uh, reasonably take for the business to reach the point where it can make enough revenue to sustain itself? Then you got to have enough working capital to cover the operating expenses for that time period. Bobby, thank you so much for explaining uh, what it's like for a small startup business and what the appropriate investment amount would be. Uh, just to summarize that, uh, when it comes to a small startup business, although the expenses are not a lot, may not be a lot, our typical recommendation would still be 100000 because when it comes to a small startup business, uh, an immigration officer can already be doubtful of that business and its success. So having a small investment amount will further add to that doubt in the officer. So ideally, uh, a $100,000 investment, even for a small startup business, uh, would be typically recommended. And it doesn't mean, like you mentioned, the entire amount needs to be spent. There is working capital to keep in the U.S. business bank account. I think that was a very great additional uh, detail to add in there for our audience. Thank you so much. Um, now, similar to what we just did, I'd also like to set another example. What about what if someone says, well, I have a really large investment. Um, I, I have a $200,000 investment. Would this work for the E2 visa? Can you help answer that for us? Uh, having a high investment amount on its own does not necessarily make the case stronger. Sometimes I actually will recommend a smaller investment amount. Beyond the investment total dollar amount, U.S. immigration, they also look at the expenditure percentage ratio. Depending on what is the real uh, startup expenditure required for the business. So let's say if the uh, real um, spending requirement of the business is $70,000 to start up the business, all the variety of expenditures, and that's the maximum the entrepreneur can show um, before applying for the E2 visa. Then I might recommend that the total investment amount be no more than $100,000 or $110,000 because that $70,000 will represent a substantial percentage in relation to the $100,000 or $110,000 investment. I would not recommend the investment be $200,000 because that then in, uh, in a situation where there's a much larger investment amount, such as $200,000, the actual expenditure uh, investment spending will fall uh, to a fairly low percentage threshold, such as for $200,000 investment based on a $70,000 actual spending, that would mean the actual expenditure is less than 40% of the total investment amount. Well, in that scenario, uh, that 40% spending actually weakens the case because a substantial portion of investment is still uncommitted, held as cash. And that makes the E2 visa weaker. You actually will have a stronger E2 visa case if the total investment was, let's say, 100 or 110,000, and where you're showing the 70% usage of your investment money. So there are a lot of these considerations that has to be determined before deciding the exact investment amount appropriate for this particular type of business. And beyond the actual like uh, spending percentage amount, there's also a consideration of how that money is spent, the 70,000, for example. Uh, typically, we want to show a balanced variety of that expenditure. You certainly don't want to spend you know, $60,000 buying a vehicle. Um, that would be an off balance of exp investment expenditure. So we, uh, as part of our uh, detailed guidance on proper in E2 investment and business setup, will advise a client on all the variety of typical startup expenditures that U.S. immigration authorities like to see and spread out the investment spending in a balanced way among all those different varieties of investment expenditure, anywhere from expenditures on the business premises, rent, renovation, build out, furnishings, uh, to equipment, to uh, marketing, to legal expenses, to inventory, if any, um, so, and, and et cetera, and more. Um, spreading that investment spending over that variety of um, startup expenditure category is also very important to demonstrate 
a credible business startup, especially for an early stage business where uh, there's uh, little to no revenues. And the immigration officer is trying to determine, is this business poised to start generating substantial revenues in the near future based on what the entrepreneur has accomplished so far? If the investment expenditure is skewed in one particular category, then it will likely trigger the concern that this business setup is premature. Uh, it hasn't been done in a thorough way to prepare the business to be ready to really hit the ground running and credibly be able to generate those customer clientele and revenue in the near term. So how the money is spent and how much of the money is spent in relation to the total investment is also a highly relevant factor in determining how much to invest. So um, my goal here is to uh, educate on the, the fact that to have a strong E2 visa case, to have a high probability of E2 visa approval, there are multiple considerations, even on what seems to be a pretty straightforward topic of how much do I invest. What seems like a simple question, how much should I invest? What's the minimum investment amount? Um, it's not that simple of an answer because there are many factors involved. Immigration officers are not just looking at the total investment amount. It goes down to a holistic overview of how much was spent in comparison to that total investment. What's the remaining capital? What is the business? And uh, whatever was spent, how was it spent? Because there should be an appropriate balance of expenditures um, among the different categories, typically for the purchase of a existing business or a startup business. Um, that's why when you're looking for uh, this answer to this question out there on the internet, um, mostly you'll just find general ranges, um, not so much the detail of these factors because it's not a black and white answer and there's complexities behind it. But uh, we've got attorney Bobby Chung here today to explain the nuances behind this question and inevitably um, how to decide what is the appropriate investment amount. And that's what we're here to help with as well, um, to help you decide if you believe you have the right investment amount to proceed with an E2 visa. Uh, you're definitely welcome to reach out to our office. We'd love to discuss what your appropriate investment amount would be for your type of business. And if you're curious to find out more about the E2 visa, such as what type of business uh, is appropriate for the E2 visa, an existing business, a startup business, franchise business, we've got more videos for you as well. Do feel free to reach out to us or check out our other videos. Bobby, thank you so much for your detailed answers today. We really appreciate it. Excellent. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Thank you.